Thank you. Um, so good morning, my name is Jitske Sarkenberg and I would like to discuss today with you something about counter-rotating galaxies. And actually, counter-rotating galaxies have been no known for a very, very long time and studied for a very, very long time. And they're quite interesting because they might give additional clues to the history of galaxies, of those particular galaxies, and more insights into galaxy formation and evolution. But they also give, uh, like for example, polar ring galaxies can give additional dynamical constraints on the structure of the galaxies themselves. Um, and so they've been, they've been found, they've been observed, they've been studied, but mostly on an individual basis, if you will. Um, but with the advance of IFU instruments and larger surveys, uh, we'll actually maybe find much, much more of these. And uh, we have already, there have been found uh, many galaxies with very interesting kinematical structures. And people have, been, have started to try to tease these apart and to see what this says about the galaxy's environment and history and formation. Um, so I have to mention one caveat. In this talk, I'm for now only talking about complete gas stellar counter-rotation. That's the other thing. Counter-rotation can mean any counter-rotation of components of galaxies. You can have stellar, stellar counter-rotation, gas, gas counter-rotation, um, multiple components with multiple different spins. Um, so for now, I'm keeping it simple. And I'm talking about galaxies that have stars rotating in one sense and gas rotating in the opposite sense. And to show you an example of this, um, this is a very nice IFU example of NGC 2551, where the stellar component is rotating in one sense and the ionized gas can be seen rotating in the opposite sense. And if you look, look along the principal axis, you can also see this in a velocity position diagram with very clear, perfect counter rotation of both components. Uh, so what I want to do is to look at this in simulations. And for this, I'm using the illustrious simulations, which produces a nice diversity of galaxies. And therefore, we were interested in looking at uh, what the predictions were for galaxies with counter rotation and where they exist, what their properties are, if they're mostly most, the most massive systems or if they're also in the lower mass systems and anything we can find out about them. But to start off, we kept it close to um, an observational sample of uh, LMC sized objects where a number of them showed very clear counter rotation. So we're looking for uh, into all systems with stellar masses between 2 times 10 to the 9 and 5 times 10 to the 10 solar masses. And we define stellar and gas co or counter rotation based on the direction of angular, total angular momentum for the stars and the gas. And within this set of galaxies, we find that about 1% has this perfect counter rotation. If you actually include disks that are inclined, so things like polar ring galaxies, um, these are more common. And then there's the sub counter rotation of different, uh, different stellar or gas components, and that should be more common even. Um, so what are the properties of these? And so far, um, I show you a few properties where the blue points show the uh, general distributions of all the galaxies and the red points show the counter rotating systems. And this shows on the top row stellar mass and on the bottom row gas mass with virial mass, the other gas or stellar mass component, um, the stellar mass with the stellar total angular momentum and the gas mass with the gas total angular momentum, star formation rate and half mass radius. Uh, yeah, for the stars. And you can see that in most cases, they span the full range of properties or of values that all the galaxies have, and they're not very distinguished, except maybe 
that counter-rotating systems do not have very high angular momentum in their stars for their stellar mass, which might be expected, maybe. Because if you have gas counter-rotating with its stars and it starts forming stars, your total angular momentum of all your stars is going to be going down. So to show an example of this, these are five systems that show very clear counter-rotation, where in each panel, the red points show the mean and the uh, standard deviation for the stellar velocity dispersion if you look at the system edge on, and the blue shows the same for the gas. And in all cases, there's a very clear counter-rotation. And um, the black lines show you the circular velocity curve, just for reference. So for now, I want to look into this system into more detail and to show you how it look, what it looks like. This is a stellar disk surface density. This is the gas surface density, face on and edge on. And if you then look at the velocities, this show the stellar, shows the stellar velocity and the gas velocity. So not only is it counter-rotating, but the disk, gas disk is also inclined with respect to the stellar disk. And another way to look at this is to look into the specific angular momentum compared to the circular velocity at the same location. And if you then look at the distribution of this, uh, this value for the stellar distribution in red, or for the gas distribution in blue, where the gas disk is in blue and the gas in the halo is in green, you can also see that the gas is mostly at values below one, which you know that it rotates in the opposite sense. So how does this come to happen? And is this just one moment in time or can it be very steady state? And in this case, I'm now showing the angle of the direction of angular momentum for the stars, the gas in the galaxy, and the gas in the halo, compared to the direction of angular momentum at, of the stars at the present day. So the stars move around a lot at the beginning, which is to be expected, but the direction of angular momentum does not change a lot with the, uh, with, at later times. For the gas, however, it's very similar to the stars, but at a certain point, there's this big drop where the angular momentum of the gas is suddenly in the opposite direction. First in the halo, then in the disk. And then it goes back up again even. And then it continues to be opposite for more than four gig years. And actually, during this period where this transition happens, the galaxy is a satellite of a much bigger galaxy more than 100 times as big. And after this, but it doesn't get very close to it, the closest pair center is about 300 kiloparsec. And after escape, it continues to be counter-rotating. But also, there's an AGN wind happening during the time, which expels a lot of the gas, which then gets stripped because of the galaxy's satellite. And then it seems to re-accrete matter in the counter-rotating sense. And this is another way to show you that, where you show the, the mass of the stars in red, the gas in the galaxy in blue, and the gas in the halo in green. And you can see that while well, the galaxy is the satellite, it, and after the feedback event, it drops very sharply and then slowly goes up again. So, where does this gas come from that is counter-rotating? Well, to show you for a few different moments in time before the, thing, the galaxy becomes a satellite, when it's a satellite and after when it's a satellite, um, what its environment looks like. This shows that all the gas in the environment within, all, within one megaparsec of the system, which is in the center, and uh, arrows show you the direction of angular momentum for the stars again in red, the gas in the galaxy in blue, and the gas in the halo in green. And there's also a zoom in, which shows 500 kiloparsecs around the galaxy. And similar to before, this shows us the distribution of circularity 
of the orbits of the stars and the gas. And you can see that at this time, before the system becomes a satellite, the gas is a slightly lower rotation actually than the stars, but it is all rotating in the same sense, in the same direction. And you can also see this in the velocity plots. So what happens when it becomes a satellite? It's in a dense area and the direction of the halo angular momentum flips to the other side. And although you, and I think I messed up the colors of the angles because it's actually the gas in the galaxy, which is more counter rotating than the gas in the halo, which you can see there. Uh, so after um, it escapes being a satellite, the galaxy is a much less dense environment. The uh, gas in the halo and in the galaxy is counter-rotating with respect to the stars, but there is actually much less gas. It has lost most of its gas during their interaction, and it now starts re-accreting that. And it starts re-accreting that along the opposite direction until at the end it's reclaimed most of its gas mass but rotating in the opposite sense. So what do we learn from this? Um, we can say that pure gas star scouts of rotating galaxies are only a very small fraction of all galaxies but they exist and they can, reach, uh, they can lead to bigger stellar stellar counter rotation. Um, however, even of those, a significant fraction is, uh, has gas disks inclined with respect to their stellar disks, so it could be considered polar uh, disk galaxies. And if you only look at the polar disk galaxies, that's a larger, much larger fraction. Um, However, they don't seem to possess specific properties compared to all galaxies at this mass. Uh, for the total gas stars counter rotation, the galaxy seems to need to lose a lot of its former gas and then re accrete material that rotates in the opposite sense. And this can be done by strong AGM feedback or by ramp pressure stripping. And this could lead to very diverse histories for these counter-rotating systems. But it might also mean that counter-rotating systems might help how strong this AGN feedback could or has to be if we compare them to observed systems. And so my main point is that the detailed history of counter-rotating galaxies can be quite diverse. They doesn't need to be uh, a satellite accretion, a merger, or a cosmic gas accretion. Um, there can be much more happening in the system. And I will stop there. Uh, at high redshift, the, the galaxies are very, uh, very changeable still. So if you go back to here, for almost all galaxies I looked at, at very high redshift, uh, their rotation changes a lot for the stars and for the gas. Yeah, it can happen, but that's for a shorter period of time because their evolution is much faster. Yeah, so for example, I also have a system that's counter-rotating since uh, 10 giga years ago. So that's where that matters. And when the, the changing gas inflow, direction of, of gas inflow, when it ends and how it ends. Yeah. I haven't looked at that. But then. Just from looking at simulations, uh, I have the impression that 
If material is at 45 degrees or cheaper with respect to the main plane of the galaxy, it will tend to, to stay that way or even become more perpendicular. But if it's less, it will tend to be short down into the plane. Now, mm -hmm. the fact that uh, you have this you know, low rate of universe, there's five times as many polar rings as counter rotating stellar systems. Uh, that's what may suggest that 